The average person is looking at the bricks and the mortar and the furnishings of this building. But when I think of a residence hall, I think of what goes on inside of it. It is probably the most visible residence hall that we will ever have. Anybody coming to campus has to drive almost all the way around it. When you look at the backbone of McKinley Avenue, it's fairly modern or contemporary types of architecture. So it starts to introduce the architectural vocabulary of our campus. In the early 2000s, we undertook a vision for what we want our residence halls at Ball State to be. Lucky for us, we were also uh, heavily involved in Akuho I, uh, the Professional Housing Association, who was doing a 21st century project which looked at residence halls for the 21st century. So when we really began our building program and renovation and replacement, it coincided with things that we learned from that particular endeavor. The real interesting piece, I think, to this particular project is we had actually envisioned this residence hall being in a different location. When we started looking at this part of campus in this neighborhood, there were some thoughts and ideas that came out of that process that said, well, maybe we ought to relocate the road and make a spot here for this building because we really were reimagining this whole end of campus as kind of a residential neighborhood. And so we had to dream with our consultants as to what's possible here. There for a while, everyone thought that the traditional two persons to a room, shared facilities, was a thing of the past and that everybody needed to be building apartments. And then we realized, you know, you miss out on some things for students when you have that. They're not as connected with one another. And it, sometimes it's not either or that there are ways to combine these various needs and desires of students in a way that's sensitive to your campus and also sensitive to the student needs. Living learning programs aren't a new concept. They've actually been around since the 40s in some places. So we wanted to create experiences for students that melded their out-of-class experience with their in-class experience and really provide an enhanced educational environment. This building is for STEM, and so we have this huge maker space with a lot of really terrific opportunities for students to learn and grow in. Regardless of major, students have some central needs and desires. They like to socialize, and so much of what you see in this building are architectural features, such as staircases that invite people to use them so that they interact with one another. We have floor lounges, which are two stories, so that you start to interact with more than one floor. We have a number of study lounges or breakout spaces throughout all of the building where students can meet in small groups. They are glassed in, so we steal light from those lounges into the hallways. One of the great features in this building, and I certainly want to thank the architects, every place has a great view. Now, in 20 or 30 years, students' needs may have changed but I hope that they see that the building is flexible enough to reflect those kind of changes and that it fulfills the need that the campus has. My biggest goal is for students to have a wonderful experience while they're here. I want them to get a great start here. I want them to look back on it as a place that they made friends, a place that they were proud to live in, that they had pride in the community and in the environment in which they uh, participated.